Okay. Hello everyone. I am Dr. Rashid Hassan, founder and CEO of Dentoscope Institute of Research and Advanced Dentistry. Uh, I am again joined today by a renowned speaker, Dr. Nagman Zuberi, who will be talking about uh, a new topic today related to oral biology. So I hand over the session to Dr. Nagman Zuberi. Thank Welcome, you very sir. much. Assalamu alaikum, everyone, and hopefully everybody is good. So today we will be discussing about the amelogenesis, or you can say that formation of enamel. Amelogenesis, it is occurring in different steps. So first of all, the step one where we will be having just the partially mineralized enamel, that is 30% of the enamel is mineralized. And then the full thickness of enamel would be formed at this time. This is called the secretory phase. Then the step two, where the influx of minerals takes place and there will be a flux of organic material and water. So that is known as the maturative phase. Well, the inner enamel epithelium it is differentiated into the ameloblasts. There are two layers of enamel, if you remember, we have discussed it earlier as well, that one is the inner enamel epithelium and the other one is the outer enamel epithelium. Outer enamel epithelium is not taking part in the enamel formation. It is the inner enamel epithelium which differentiates into ameloblasts and then the ameloblasts, they start laying down the enamel. It is starting at the incisal edges and at the cuspal tips. And then it flows down to till all the cells of inner enamel epithelium, they get differentiated. Reciprocal induction is also going on. Like two notable features are, first of all, the high alkaline phosphatase activity will be seen at this time. And then the compensation of the distant vascular supply. If I would be able to draw the picture for you, yes. This is the inner enamel epithelium. This is the outer enamel epithelium. And vascular supply would be lying somewhere here. Now, how the nutrients are going to reach to this inner enamel epithelium. So what is going to happen? This is going to regress a little bit so that the uh, vascular bed will come closer to the inner enamel epithelium and differentiating ameloblasts. Let me just get my pointer back. Yes. So the secretory phase of amelogenesis, the organic matrix of enamel is there. The enamel proteins, enzymes like serine proteases, metalloproteinases, phosphatases, then the traces of proteins, which are analogous to various glycosylated, sulfated, and phosphorylated non-collagenous proteins. Enamel proteins, 90% are amelogenins, and rest 10%, they are enamelin, tuftalin, and amelin. <coughs> amelogenins, these are heterogeneous group of gene-specific low molecular weight protein. Their molecular weight is 20 to 30 kDa. They are hydrophobic proteins. They are rich in proline, histidine, and glutamine. Enzymatic degradation leads to formation of the LRAP, which is lysine-rich amelogenin protein, and the other one is TRAP, which is tyrosine-rich amelogenin protein. Then tuftalins, their uh, molecular weight is not uh, very high, but it is higher than the previous ones, 45 kDa. Acidic phosphorylated glycoproteins localized on chromosome number one. They are confined to region of amelodentinal junction. There is a hypothesis that they play a role in the initial stages of mineralization. How true it is, not yet proven, but there is a hypothesis. 
Enamelin, 2% of the total enamel proteins are enamelin and undergoes post-translation change from 142, means it is very uh, heavy molecule, but finally, as the uh, process proceeds, it becomes like uh, 32 kDa. So there is basically post-translation change and its atomic weight, its molecular weight, it decreases. It's bind, it, like this one, enamelin, it binds strongly to the minerals. Amelin, 5 to 10 percent of the total enamel proteins undergoes post-translation change from 62 to 15. Though it is not very heavy weight, but still it is heavier. And as the translation occurs, so it goes uh, in the post-translation chain and its molecular weight decreases. The enamel proteins, they are important because they provide environment to accept the mineral and mineral is required for enamel. They have the ability to determine nature and direction of the crystal growth and ability to flow under the pressure. Then comes the mineralization phase of amelogenesis. No matrix ve vesicles for initial calcification are available. Close environment to initiation crystal formation. Here the enamel crystals, they believe to be nucleated by the apatite crystals of dentin. So again, I will tell you this important thing that firstly, like when the uh, differentiation is occurring, first of all, keep in mind that the ameloblasts, they get differentiated. And once the ameloblast is differentiated, after that, the mesenchymal cells of dental papilla, they get differentiated into odontoblasts. First thing first is, um, uh, this ameloblasts, they get differentiated. And once they get differentiated, then the odontoblasts, they get differentiated. But they are going to lay the first layer of dentine, which is called mental dentine. And after the first layer of dentine, what is going to happen? Then ameloblasts, they start laying the first layer of enamel and then they will continue to lay down the enamel on this side and they move apart from this area, the dentino enamel junction, the future dentino enamel junction. Whereas odontoblasts, they also migrate towards the pulp and uh, they will be laying down the dentine in this area. But the first form dentine, which is mental dentine, it is always formed before the enamel. Tuftalin is thought to be the first nucleator of enamel crystals. Mineralization phase of amelogenesis. Following initiation of mineralization, then the enamel crystals, they grow rapidly in length with an organic matrix laid down. And keep in mind, very important thing that there is, an, there is no lag between the organic matrix uh, laying down and the process of mineralization. Both will occur side by side. Mineralization, it continues till the entire thickness of enamel is laid down. Therefore, first form enamel is moderately hard or softer as compared to the final stage of enamel. Then comes the maturity phase of amelogenesis. The addition of minerals to first form enamel occurs at this time and the enamel proteins, they are displaced and they are being removed as well as water is also being removed from the enamel. They have the tendency to flow under the pressure we have already discussed and the proteases by the ameloblast they grade the amelogenesis, the maturative phase of amelogenesis. In maturative phase of amelogenesis, the first stage where the primary mineralization occurs, formation of the partially mineralized enamel, which is 30%, we have already discussed it earlier, full thickness of enamel is laid down later. Narrow zone of 8 micron innermost layer, which is dentino enamel junction, is heavily mineralized as soon as it is formed. And that is, we have already discussed that 
probably enamelin plays a vital role in that uh, mineralization phase. Then comes the second stage. Here the mineralization is going to be increased and it starts from the surface of enamel and sweeps rapidly into the deeper layers. Then the third stage, mineral rebounding from the innermost layer towards the surface of the enamel. Maturative phase of amylogenesis. 15 microns of the sulfate layer is mineralized slowly and heavily, then highly mineralized surfaces there. The degree of mineralization decreases towards the dentino enamel junction, and then the highly mineralized inner zone. So inner zone, we have already discussed that it is highly mineralized. Early bell stage is the most favorable stage for amylogenesis. Then the late uh, bell stage, it comes and over there, the ameloblasts, they start being uh, differentiating, like in the early, the uh, separation occurs between the uh, outer enamel epithelium and the inner enamel epithelium. They start migrating and the shape of the crown is being taken. Late bell stage, the differentiation of the ameloblasts occur which will cause the odontoblast to get differentiated and the first layer of dentine is being laid down and on top of that the first layer of enamel is going to be laid down so dentine formation occurs then the enamel matrix deposition occurs after that here i have already mentioned about that first layer of the uh, this uh, first layer of enamel deposition by the ameloblast over the dentine occurs, then the retraction of ameloblast, and finally the formation of the uh, tomes process. And th these are conical processes. These are the tomes processes. These are conical and these are tomes processes. This is the light uh, microscopic features. Secretion of the full enamel thickness completed and then the transitional phase of ameloblast the morphological changes they occur then post secretory ameloblast which is in the maturative ameloblast they start then becoming shorted and they start losing their tomes processes enamel maturation is completed and then it is going to be covered by the reduced enamel epithelium Reduced enamel epithelium comes from the stratum reticulum, stratum intermedium, then also the outer enamel epithelium. They together form the protective layer, which is known as the reduced enamel epithelium. So if we look at the uh, electron microscopy of amelogenesis, firstly the morphogenic stage where the uh, shape is going to be taken as the in the early bell stage then the differentiation stage then comes the secretory stage then the maturation stage then the protective stage and finally when the eruption will start then there is going to be desmolytic stage morphogenetic stage as i told you in the early bell stage of tooth development the inner enamel epithelium it is low columnar to cuboidal cells centrally placed nuclei Golgi bodies placed proximally and mitochondria and other cytoplasmic bodies are scattered at this stage. Now the differentiation occurs, the inner enamel epithelium is going to be converted into ameloblasts. Ameloblasts had histopathological features are they elongate, the nuclei, they shift proximally, the Golgi complex increases in volume and migrate to central core of cell. There will be increase in the rough endoplasmic reticulum and mitochondria. They start moving proximally. The cell is called a polarized cell because the nucleus, it has moved towards the proximal surface, the proximal area or proximal end. We call this as the proximal where the enamel is, uh, this ameloblast is moving. And where it is laying down the enamel, that is known as distal uh, end. The nucleus, it has moved towards the proximal end. And 
uh, endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus, it is going to be increased in number and they become hyperactive and they will start forming the vesicles, which is going to lay down the enamel proteins. The cell organelles, they're situated in cell body. As I told you, they move. The organelles, they move distally. The basal lamina supporting ameloblasts disintegrate after deposition of the predentine. This area is predentine. And this is the first lead enamel over here. Ameloblasts are closely aligned. Development of the junctional complexes at this stage. These are the junctional complexes, both at the proximal end and the distal end. They encircle complete cell. The proximal terminal webs, these are the proximal terminal webs, and these are the distal terminal webs. Fine acting containing filaments radiate from junctional complex into the cytoplasm of the ameloblast. These are the filaments which are projecting into the uh, cytoplasm of the cell. <laughs> now, what is going to happen at this time? The endoplasmic reticulum, it is going to be increased in number. The Golgi complexes, they will be hyperactive and these organelles, they will make the condensed and packaged membrane boundary secretory granules, which are going to uh, release the contents over newly formed dentine from the distal end of the ameloblast. This is the distal end of the ameloblast. And as I told you the, uh, earlier, there is no lag between the uh, inorganic uh, laying down of the uh, contents of the ameloblast and the mineralization. Both they occur simultaneously. Secretory stage, the hydroxyapatite crystal are randomly packed on first form dentine and interdigitate with the dentine crystals. A structureless layer of the enamel is deposited. First layer is structureless. Later stages, like later layers, they are having very beautiful uh, like uh, the rods and the prisms and everything is so organized. But first form layer is crystalless. Ameloblasts migrate away from the dentine surface, permitting formation of the domes processes. These are the <laughs> domes processes. Now, this is the tones process. This is the schematic diagram. They are demarcated by the distal terminal web. These are the distal terminal webs. These are the distal terminal webs. These are the tones processes. They contain secretory granules and small vesicles. These are the vesicles and secretory granules. Secretion of enamel proteins becomes staggered and is confined to two sites. One is around the like periphery of the area and then second one is filling the cavity, that uh, cavity which is formed by the peripheral enamel. This is the peripheral enamel and this is the filling in of the enamel. First site, which is adjacent to the proximal part of the process, close to junctional complex around the periphery of cell along the, which that are from the adjacent ameloblast. If we look at this uh, theoretically, it will be something like this. The first form layer will be something like this. All the adjacent ameloblasts, they will be forming enamel like this. And then what is going to happen, the second site will be filling in of this cavity by the enamel. And that is why we get this fish scale or the keyhole appearance. This is the pit which is formed. The wall is being formed from the first site. And then the Pits, the tomes processes are here in this area. Second site, one surface of the tomes process, 
later fills pit with the matrix. Crystals in the pit have different orientation from that of the walls. So only the orientation is different. Otherwise, their chemistry is the same. In the security stage, as I told you, the wall of the pit, it is the interrod enamel and infilling in pit is the enamel rod. Enamel component in both places is identical. I have already mentioned that. Differ only in the orientation of crystallite, but why we have structureless enamel in the first place, we are still don't have any clue about it. Further research is required in that area. Amylin, the highly concentrate, they are highly concentrated in enamel rod sheath area. They are also called, uh, called as shathlin. Amylogenins localized in lysosomes of secretory ameloblasts. The synthesis of enamel protein is well in advance, simultaneously involved with the removal of enamel proteins. In maturative stage, full thickness of partially mineralized enamel is deposited. Brief transitional stage of ameloblasts at this time, they start reducing in the height. The organelles and their content, they are going to be decreased. And autophagic vacuoles with lysosomal enzymes, they are also going to be present. Shifting of the organelles from the, uh, they, they are going to like move now towards the distal end. And we are going to have a cyclic process, the water and organic material is selectively removed from the enamel and the inorganic material is going to be increased in amount, means the mineralization process is going to occur and it will be alternative. It is a cyclical process. The ruffle ended ameloblasts and the smooth ended ameloblasts, they are present during this cycle, how? When the ruffle end ameloblast will be there, there will be introduction of inorganic material. And proximal junctions, they will be leaky and distal junctions will be tight. I will show you the picture. When there will be a smooth ended ameloblast, there will be removal of proteins and water from the enamel and distal junctions will be leaky while proximal junctions are tight. Now, over here, you can see the picture. This is the ruffle ended ameloblast. They both the simultaneously, like in a cycle, these things are, for, at times they are uh, ruffle ended, at times they are smooth ended. When they are ruffle ended, so their proximal junctions, they are leaky and distal junctions are tight and they are introducing the inorganic material into the enamel. Whereas once they will become the smooth ended, their proximal junctions, they become tight and their distal junctions, they become leaky and they start removing the inorganic matter or inorganic material from the enamel, which will subsequently be uh, taken over by the uh, rest of the uh, like body circulation and it will be removed from this area. Now comes the protective stage. Following completion of enamel calcification, ameloblasts, they de-differentiate. Firstly, they differentiate. Now their job is done. They will de-differentiate. Once the enamel is formed, that's it no more formation of enamel, unlike dentine, which is going to be formed throughout the life. And when there will be any stimulus, then deposition of dentine is going to be increased. Once there is damage to enamel, no more enamel formation. Ameloblasts, they secrete material between distal end of the cells and enamel surface. The material appears morphologically similar to basal lamina, Hemidesmosomes form a long distal cell membrane, providing firm attachment for ameloblasts with enamel surface. This is important for establishment of the dentogingival junction. Then the protective stage comes. Here, ameloblasts, the stratum intermedium, stratum reticulum, and the outer enamel epithelium, together they form the stratified epithelium, which is reduced enamel epithelium. And its function is to protect the mature enamel till the eruption by separation from the connective tissue. 
so that the uh, newly formed enamel, it is not going to have any damage from the tissues. Anomalies may develop in case connective tissue comes in contact with the enamel surface. At cemento enamel junction, ameloblasts may retract, resulting in the deposition of a fibrillar cementum on the enamel surface. Well, if we talk about the cemento enamel junction, so let's say that this is our enamel, then this is our cementum. And this is the pulp. And here the enamel is formed. And then we have cementum in this area. This is dentine, this is enamel, and this is cementum. If we look at the cemento enamel junction, there are three possibilities, cemento enamel junction. One is there will be just end-to-end -end relationship, means a butt joint is formed. Just they are ending end to end. Second will be there would be a gap between the two and dentine would be exposed. There will be a gap. And third one is the enamel is overlapped by the cementum. Well, most commonly this thing happens in the beginning. The cementum, it overlaps enamel. At this stage, a fibrillar uh, cementum is formed. A fibrillar means it does not have the Sharpie's fibers. We know that uh, Sharpie's fibers, the which are the uh, periodontal ligament fibers, they are on one end, they are embedded in the cementum. And on the other side, they are embedded in the uh, bone. In this area where the cementum is overlapping enamel, it is not having any fibers. Then comes the desmolytic stage. Epithelium induces the connective tissue, thus facilitating fusion of the oral epithelium and the reduced enamel epithelium. Epithelial cells elaborate enzymes to destroy connective tissue by Premature regeneration may prevent the eruption of tooth. Keep this thing in your mind. If it is hard with root head, it is prematurely degenerated, then eruption of the tooth will be important. Now let's see the beginning of the amelogenesis in the permanent teeth of human dentition. This is zero year. And this is and most commonly the maximum symptom type error at the present day. The polar is the natural incisor, natural incisor, and post polar. Here, the mammal formation starts at a very early age, like within the first few months or weeks of the year. And usually here, formation completes by fifth year of the life. And residues are formed. They are being uh, done as the advances, second molar, and uh, this is the last one, apart from third molar. We are not considering about the third molar. Well, at the time of tooth eruption, the enamel is not completely mineralized and will undergo a post eruptive period that is topical effect because of chloride in water and other uh, minerals and food particles and everything. So, throughout this enamel maturation period, the fluoride co continues to accumulate in the outer surface of the enamel. Complete maturation will take approximately two years to get up. 
So over here we are done with our this lecture on amelogenesis and as Dr. Rasha will ask me to uh, deliver lecture on basic sciences, we will continue. This is the view from my window, this window which you are seeing at the back when I open this uh, 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 blind. So this is the view and I, when I sit over here, I watch uh, all this beautiful view while making the lectures for all of you so see you soon inshallah with the new lecture with the new uh, topic and we will be together again thank you very much thank you so much dr nagman very for your time and a very informative lecture today uh, inshallah uh, uh, i will request you to please uh, join us again on next wednesday with some another topic yeah, you let me just know what topic you want and we will inshallah do that. Thank you so much. Okay. Sir. Thank you so Allah much. Hafiz. Take care, sir. Allah Hafiz.